Hello and welcome to episode 115 of the Rollo and Slappy Show. Today is October 22nd, 2018. I am Rollo McFlugel and with me is Slappy Jones 2 and we are both of McFlugel.com. Show notes page for this episode will be McFlugel.com slash 115. You'll be able to find links to some of the things we talk about as well as uh, ways to subscribe to this podcast on all the catchers. And to check out LibertyMugs.com, where we sell libertarian-themed mugs. And I've had a couple recently that will be uh, pretty relevant to this episode. So with that, I'm going to hand it over to Slappy, and he's going to introduce our episode topic. Yeah, thank you, Rallo. Thanks, everyone, for listening. I'm Slappy Jones. Uh, this is the Rallo and Slappy Show. And today, hey, if you follow Liberty Memes, as Rallo just alluded to, there's been some mugs out there recently about our friendly neighborhood teachers who just work. They don't do it for the money. Um, They do it because they love your kids and they want your kids to be very smart and open-minded and successful. And um, so we made some mugs for them. Um, And there's also been Time Magazine had a cover recently about how teachers are underpaid. I know uh, me and Rallo were looking at an article from USA Today that talked about teachers uh, they seem to think they're very underappreciated and underpaid, um, even though they don't do it for the money. They constantly, constantly, always talking about how they're underpaid. Uh, and there's a whole lot of problems, we think, with the whole school system to begin with. Um, but we did look up some statistics, and uh, we just want to talk about teachers in general. Maybe some of these mugs, if you want to uh, explain some of them, we can do a giant Liberty Mugs advertisement for this uh, this episode. So, Rallo... <laughs> What do you think about your teachers? Didn't you have good teachers in school? Why, why are you so all over teachers? Yeah, I had some good teachers, and, it, and you know, not all of them are bad. Uh, but it's the the system that they're in is atrocious and does a lot of bad. And that's I know typically people want to say, and libertarians especially, rip on public school for good reason, but then they kind of say that private schools that basically work the same ways in a lot of and and depending on the school most i would say that's true for most of them but as far as their curriculum and and what they do the uh, textbooks everything right they're all the same how 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 just school is done is is the same and it's and it's all poison um but i'll say this and i'm sure this will freak some people out but I, I was thinking about this recently and i think i might uh believe that the worship of teachers is worse is more nefarious than uh, the worship of the police. Ooh. That's a big one. I know. So, why? I mean, what's, it's, it's your harmless local school teacher. It's just, you know, I'm sure you know teachers. Sure. Probably good good people you grew up with, maybe even family members. I don't know. Yep. Um, yeah, we've all got family members. We've all got friends that are teachers. So I don't they're mean, harmless. Yeah, I don't mean to say that <laughs> this necessarily applies to to all of them, um, um, or not even not even no. I mean to say that they're like teachers are idiots or whatever. I, I'm not saying that every single one, but I'm saying this worship of it, yeah. worship of them that you're not that they're untouchable, and that you have to say, uh, oh, they're 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 such wonderful people that they're doing something. You know, they're not doing it for the money, and you should thank your teachers and give back to whatever. No, they. They're doing a job just like the rest of us. They're getting paid for their service. They agree to what doing what they're doing for the amount they get paid. That's the end of it. I, I don't owe my teachers anything. They got paid already. Like, what do I owe them? I could, I could be thankful, or just like any other good or service. I could. We do a free market success story every week here. Thankful and, for the car manufacturers. Yeah, so we're, we're... I don't owe them anything. I already paid for my car. Right, but we can bring up like good things that happen, but... But to say like you're required to – if you go – just go on Twitter and, and just start like saying stuff about teachers and you're going to get people that are going to like lose their minds over it. Even people that are uh, otherwise normally somewhat level-headed. It's not just uh, – Do you think that's – see, what other professions are like that? Obviously the police. People go nuts over that. Any sort of government servant. It does seem like that. Like, and that's why no- they call them the government, like, servant. It implies this, like, oh, they're, they're doing it out of the goodness of their heart. They're serving you. But they're 
taking a job like anybody else. I mean, because it's with the kids. It's for the kids. Think of the children. I mean, real. I'm actually trying to think of a, um, I guess, private industry that has the same type of reverence, and I don't know that there is one. No, I don't like, think there I think is. If you, if you say like car salesmen are are just underpaid people and just have such a tough job, everyone, nobody would have any sympathy for them. Doctors, doctors, you can criticize doctors. Yep. Plus, what they get paid well is, I guess, what the what the teachers would say. Mm-hmm. Um, although, depending on what kind of doctor you are, some make more than others. Attorneys, you know, I don't know. But what what makes me especially annoyed about like this whole teacher thing is how whiny so many of them are um and not all of them i know plenty of them that are that don't complain about their pay or the fact they only work eight months out of the year but we have to plan for the school year over the summer too it's not like we're not working okay so that uh, (laughs) so she left me a spot to go in a couple of things, a couple of themes that just like make my brain melt out of my ear when I hear it is when people say or teachers say about themselves, well, we don't do it for the money. We do it for the love of the children. Bull crap. That is just a lie. Uh, because if you took their salary away, they wouldn't do it. They would find something else. On top of that, so many of them are complain about they don't get paid enough. And that's what everyone says. Oh, we, we should be paying our teachers more. Why? Well, that was the whole thing with Time Magazine. And if you actually look it up, um, it's hard to argue they don't get paid well. Yeah. Well, it's, it's also like I wouldn't want someone who doesn't do it for the money. Just like I don't want my – if I hired a plumber – I would want him to be doing it for the money because if he does a good job, he's going to make more money. So someone who doesn't do stuff for the money, uh, their incentives aren't in line very well. Now you could simultaneously love your work and, you know, love teaching kids, you know, love being around kids and that kind of stuff. Um, There's nothing wrong with that. It helps. It helps you do a good job. It adds an incentive, but. Are you telling me you don't podcast for the money? (laughs) Yeah. Dude, we get that Coke money every week. That's true. Have your have your checks not been coming in? No, I get them. I cash them. Yeah. Yeah. That's why I do it. But even like, okay, you bring up that point. We do something. One, it's a hobby. But two, if we didn't have our day jobs, we couldn't be doing this. No, exactly. This isn't what I would do if I didn't make money elsewhere. Right. Um, so it's just, it's so stupid. Um, to say they don't do it for the money. And then speaking of money, you hear it too. They say, well, you have to understand teachers don't get paid 12 months out of the year, which I said that to someone recently who. This was a Twitter exchange or is this? I hear it's exchange? on Twitter and I hear it in. in I hear in it all the time. Life too. Um, teachers are some of the funnest to talk to actually. I did a video, like a man on the street interview a couple of years ago. I think it was like four years ago uh, after a Hillary Clinton rally in philadelphia and i ended up talking to a, a philadelphia school teacher for a while and she brought this up too she said well teachers don't get paid 12 months out of the year and she said well you can negotiate you do get your salary spread out over uh 12 months 12 out months. of the year but okay you don't work for 12 months out of the year you work for eight months out of the year so why would you expect to get paid uh over the four months that you're not working and I said that to someone on Twitter recently, and, and another guy came in. Well, they uh, he, he says it was just like they want it to be spread out. It's like, yeah, I get that, but why would you? Why would it be normal to get paid while you're not working? But anyway, if you're a teacher and you get paid for only only eight months out of the year, and that causes you a financial problem the four months that you're not working because someone's not spreading it out over 12 months for you, you are an idiot. You probably I don't know how any, yeah, I don't want you anywhere near any kids I ever have. I don't know how to put that any nicer than that, but you are 
an absolute yeah. if, idiot. If you start on January 1st or whatever, September 1st, and you say, I'm going to get paid for the next eight months or whatever, and not for the next three, and you can't budget, you can't figure out that I have to put some of this away, or you can't figure out maybe I should work in those months that I'm not teaching. I don't know what to tell you. Yeah. I, 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 people say that all the time and no matter how they try to frame it, but when you bring that argument up, I, you're just, you're stupid. And I don't know what's worse. It, it, like the fact that that's convincing to a lot of people, like is kind of telling. It's very sad. Yeah. I mean, I guess you just, there's no, no way those people are thinking at all. Right. And you know, there, I'm sure there's plenty of jobs, contract jobs where they pay, it happens all the time, actually. Um, you know, maybe I'll say I, I take, uh, I cut lawns for ten dollars each, and one lawn will take an hour, and the other will take five minutes, but I get ten dollars either way. Um, I wouldn't complain about the one that took an hour. Right. Well, there's. You know there's... what I'm saying? Like the the money for the for the time. Like if you accept the job that pays you, what do you want to say? Fifty thousand dollars a year. Yeah, or for fifty thousand dollars over the next twelve months or eight months, you're not going to work for four. I mean, you you know that you accepted the job, right? And you can also say, "Oh, wait, there's four months that I can make more money," right? Which a lot of teachers do. A lot, uh, a ton of them do. When I used to caddy, uh, when I was in high school, college, I would caddy in the summer. So it's a ton of teachers who caddy. It's a way to make a couple extra bucks in the summer. Yep. If you go down the shore. In the summer, a lot of teachers are working summer jobs down there. Yep. Or a lot of them just kind of do like tutoring and stuff. Right. Um, so it's actually, I mean, uh, that said, I, I'm, I'm ripping on teachers generally, but a lot of teachers I talk to love having summer those off. four months off. Yeah. I know a teacher pretty well. who The reason he wanted to be a teacher is because he had summers off. Yeah. Like, what other job can I get where I'm not going to work in the summer? Um. And I tried to like professional you know, football player. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they do a lot of work. I know, but um, they don't have to show up anywhere Sundays necessarily. True. They actually only work sixteen days a year if they miss the playoffs. Um, but uh, no, I tried to get on his like teacher side. I'm like, like just you know, kind of see what he'd say. And he's like, no, it's easy. I've been teaching the same subject for ten years. I know, you know. I don't have to redo this stuff. <laughs> He's uh, kind of gets it. Yeah, because that's one of the things, you know, they, well, we have to put together lesson plans. Oh, you, yeah, but isn't it basically the same thing over and over again? Every job does that. I have a meeting tomorrow morning, um, very important one that I'll be preparing for tonight. I don't get paid by the hour. In fact, if the case doesn't sell, I get paid nothing. I've yeah. been working on this thing since June. Well, you should just complain I that you don't get paid do. enough. Number of hours I put into this, if it doesn't go through, I get zero dollars for it. And so I, it's funny because teachers, you know, there's this whole idea that everyone says teachers don't get paid enough. We should be paying our teachers more. Okay, well, why don't they get paid more? Does anyone stop and think about that question? And what, yeah. So what is the right wage for a teacher? How do you even determine what's I, fair? I would say it's less than what they're getting paid because there's artificial demand. Well, I was going to say, how do we know that? Like, how do you know that teachers are overpaid? Yeah, uh, just because uh, there's this uh, So one, one way. Yeah, go ahead. I was going to say the one way I would know is if you've ever talked to – now this hasn't, you know, because I'm a little older now, but when I, when I was coaching football – um, years ago, high school football, I uh, coached with a lot of teachers and a lot of kids who are just done playing football in college. And now they're helping out with the team and they're trying to get teaching jobs and they can't find any anywhere. Uh, they have to apply in every school district around and it's really hard to get a job. And then they take substitute teaching jobs, which they always say are underpaid because they can't find jobs that are full-time teaching jobs. There just aren't any in Pennsylvania, at least. Um, so that would seem to be 
to mean that they're overpaid because there's an excess supply of teachers out there trying to get these jobs. Plus, there's the artificial demand making the government uh, say that you have to go to school. Right. And have to do it in, in their certain approved ways. Um, but even with that, um, in a market, yeah, of course, it's going to be tough to find jobs, sure. especially depending on what job you want. I mean, if you want to play quarterback in the NFL, there's only 32 of them to start. Um, and you have to have the talent to go along with it. But given that teachers, um, what do you think? Uh, are they, they're pretty, you, <laughs> I don't know how much, how much trouble you want to start, but teachers aren't usually, I mean, pretty much anyone can be a teacher, right? <laughs> uh, well, without this, the stupid certification problem, uh, things they make you go through, they make you sit in a classroom for way longer than you need to, to learn nonsense. Um, but yeah, otherwise to teach, uh, first graders how to read and numbers, I I think the qualifications are pretty low for that. Um, now there might be people that are better at dealing with kids like that. So I think there's something to that. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, but like the actual skills, uh, to be able to. I don't know, sit with a, a book, the teacher's book, and go through the lesson to help people. I mean, they that's what they do, though. In in grade all school, right. they, they have kids, uh, they have other kids be tutors for younger kids. It happens all the time. So actually, like, one-on-one teaching, where they're trying to actually get kids who can't understand it just by having a teacher uh, lecture up there all day, uh, they actually have to have someone sit down and explain it to them in a different way. Um, they uh, they farm that out to other students, to kids. Like that should tell you something. That should be a signal that you that you can be another kid and be a teacher, which. You know, makes you lead you to believe that, all right, well, maybe this lecturing thing, and this is where we're getting more into the private school problems too, the, the way that we, this Prussian school model, maybe is pretty inefficient and silly uh, because you're not actually, I mean, most kids are sitting in the classroom, especially in younger grades. You, uh, or at least when, when I went to school, they had everyone in the entire grade we had two classrooms for grade and they didn't like spread you out based on your proficiencies and stuff. And we had like an, an advanced math class that a couple kids went to. Yep. Uh, but otherwise the teacher has to prepare and give a lesson that that's good for everyone to get the, keep the, the smartest, best students from being bored out of their minds and keep the kids that aren't going to get it uh, from ripping the the walls down so i mean maybe you you find a a happy medium for a couple kids in the class but probably not i mean the time that the the kids spending in the classroom they're not getting much uh good quality education time at all so why are we making them sit in a classroom all day talk to anyone about what they learn in school it's pretty much nothing um and Brian Kaplan made a a point. He's had a line. I heard him interviewed um, where he was saying like, yeah, people can name facts. Like they can tell you who the first president is, but they can't tell you anything about them. Um, And so it's like, if you learned half the alphabet, are you literate? Like, you know, some letters, like, do you really learn anything? Is any, does anyone come out of school an expert in anything? Well, yeah, good point on that. If I, uh, J.W. Weatherman talks about this a lot. Uh, we'll, we'll link to his, uh, when he was on the Friends Against Government podcast, talk about MathBot, which is awesome. Yeah. And is actually a good way to educate kids how to learn math and programming. But he made the point that the way that schools are modeled right now, it's just, you're just filling out forms. You're just learning uh, basically a recipe and just doing it over and over again. Mm-hmm. You're not actually learning how to problem solve. You're just, hey, do this method. And memorize it. No one, no wonder kids like, want to poke their eyes out. Just the nature of the way school is, it, it 
you know, things are things. And this is let's even just assume school made sense at one time, which you know, the way school is now anyway, which I don't believe it ever did. But let's just for the sake of argument, say it did. I mean, I do a lot of work on my iPhone today. An iPhone wasn't even invented when I was in school. Um, but you kind of learn how to use things when you need them. Yep. Um, and, and kids are learning. My kids are very young. And I'm, I, you know, I don't know how much I knew when I was their age, but they amaze me all the time, the things they learn on their own. And you just kind of let them go. And, and they say things that shock you all the time. Oh, yeah. Um, because kids want to learn, and I believe school kind of beats the learning out of you. Uh, it made me hate reading. Made me, and I did well in school. Like I'm not one of those um, kids who's just mad because I failed or something. I did very well in school. I did very well on my, you know, we'll talk about how great I am. <laughs> I you did. Uh, you compare yeah. SAT scores. Yeah, we'll just talk about our SATs. I, we did. I'm sure. I don't. You know, I'm sure you did very well in your yeah. SATs too. Uh, so it's not like I have some kind of accident. I did well in school. Um, I was in uh, whatever top top of the class. Yeah, um, I I didn't mind school when yeah, I was in there. I, I, I actually I, hated school. Yeah. I hated the learning. I hated the classes, but I did well in them. Um, and I just think it's a whole big waste of time. Mm-hmm. Uh, you have kids in the school for how many hours, and they come out learning nothing. And all you have to do is talk to someone. Nobody knows how to think critically. Nobody knows how to think, period. Well, and, and like you said, even if we take for granted that this whole education school system shouldn't have existed in the first place, and we say, all right, well, let's say that the Prussian model is fine or, or whatever, that, that the Prussian model at the time was the right thing to do. What innovation has there been in education? Overall, I mean, there has been stuff, but but like that's been put in Minor place my, like, on on a large scale. Yeah, like nothing. Oh, there's some computers in classrooms <coughs> now. Wow, that congratulations. Uh, but like teaching methods, the fact that we have the internet now that you can go on YouTube and these other services and look up lessons and learn whatever you want. You just go and Google it. Go on YouTube and just whatever you want to learn. And That's there's, funny. there's a lifetime of information out there. Like school is obsolete. You don't even need school now. Kids can learn by Google. Right. Um, and if there's a topic they really want it to be in, um, yes, there are some jobs, I guess, where you would need to know the boring things. But you would come to that later, right? Like sure. If you want to be an engineer and you like building things and you figure out how to build it and then one thing leads to the next and then you end up learning about calculus or whatever. Um, that would happen and there would be people who could teach it and fill that need. There's no reason to sit a bunch of kids in a classroom and do all this stuff where they don't learn anything. Yeah. I mean, there's, uh, I'm not trying to say that there's never uh, a time and a place for instruction or a classroom time, but it's way, 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 way overused. Um, and like you said, you're saying about you're amazed by what your kids learn. My nephews, like the oldest one's going to be seven soon or seven in January, he knows more about sharks than I ever have because it's something to interest him. And we were saying this before the show, how it was all, I, I didn't, I didn't read much at all in, in school. I had to go in grade school. You had to go to the library every week and, and check a book out. I would get the same one all the time. Occasionally I would find something that I thought was kind of interesting and I would, I would read it. But for the most part, I never did any reading. I never learned outside of school. Uh, and then once I, you know, graduated college and was on my own, and now I'm like reading books a lot and learning all sorts of stuff. And I always just assumed that it was like, well, maybe you just hit a, a level of maturity where you just want to learn now and, and it's a change of who you are. No, I just think it's you finally have the opportunity to just have self-directed learning and learn what you want to do. I don't think you've reached some certain age where a, a, a button or a switch gets flipped and all of a sudden you're really interested in learning. Because if you look at little kids before they, they go to school. To learn. What do they yes. say? What's the one question they ask about everything? Why? 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 And yeah, my, my son is four years old, one of them anyway. And every time we want to do something, he'll try to figure out a reason why we're doing it. You know, like I'll be like uh, – all right, buddy, let's go pick up. I'm going to go pick up the leaves. 
Why? Because you don't want to slip on them. Like he always is thinking, like he wants to have that reason, that thought process. He's, it might be something silly. It makes no sense, but uh, he's always trying to think of like, why are we doing things? He wants to learn. Mm -hmm. And I know, you know, if we send him to school, it's just going to get beat. It's depressing to think, Um, but he's going to sit in that classroom and be bored out of his mind, but he's dying to learn. He just wants to learn. So I, I, you know, we haven't figured out what we're going to do there yet, but yeah, my nephew already knows how to read pretty well. Yeah. Because you wanted to do it. Right. And, you know, it's, it's, yeah, school beats the, the desire to learn it's out the of you. It's the desire to learn out of you. It's, and it stops you from thinking. You Then you, you shift your focus from learning to how do I pass the test. Right. But no, these, these teachers should be worshipped and they're not paid enough. And I want to get back to that because you, you said, and I think we kind of got off track almost immediately. Unless we talked about it and I forget already. Um, but you said it's more dangerous to worship teachers than cops. And why do you think that is? Oh. Uh, I was going to make a joke, but. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's it's because the teachers are part of the system uh, that the schooling thing that it drills into these kids how to think. And how to behave. And because we have this Prussian model, it's not a good thing. Um, They are helping to create the drones. Absolutely. Of society. These uh, useful ideas of the government. Self-perpetuating system. Yes. That that helps out these people who think exactly the same way. Yeah. These, uh, the NPC memes. Yep. That's where they're created. It's like that Pink Floyd song. Yeah, another brick in the wall. Yep. It's all walking in the meat grinder. Yep. Like that's that's awful. And without that, without that programming that we have, and it's not just public schools, because in private schools, I mean, we, we both went to Catholic school growing up. Mm-hmm. Um, it's the same state approved curriculum. It's the same sit in the classroom. Uh, you have to raise your hand if you want to go to the bathroom or speak. This like treating kids that are 17 and 18 years old like they're four. Being scared of adults, not knowing how to interact with adults. You're with people your same age the whole way through. Um, You just get thrown out there. Without that programming, there's no way that people would be would be thinking that, yeah, cops are cops are cool. Right. I want to join the military because, you know, going out and doing whatever they do without thinking is cool. So that's that is the more of the root cause. The teachers in that system are more of the root cause than this, you know, for the the root cause for this worship of the the military and police and stuff. That's why I think it's more nefarious, especially yeah, if, because if it's they done cut out the schools. Then they have a, a a tough time doing the rest of it. Yeah, and you know, um. Oh, where was I go? I just lost my train of thought on that. Is Grum getting in your way? No, it's Zena. Yeah. Um, well, I could take this time to another point that gets messed up that, that the schooling system does such a terrible job at is there's no training for tractors. Is that so? Yes. Unless you go to like, you know, you want to go to college, you go to like schools. Texas A&M. Yeah. It's an agricultural school out here somewhere. Yeah. I bet you learn a little bit about tractors there. Maybe, but they don't teach it when you're young. And drill that and and plow that into the kids' heads. Yeah. So I, I, I can't remember where I was going to go at this point, but there, there's, um, you know, the world, the world is changing. People aren't learning. People are finally realizing, uh, you know, the intellectual dark web. Um, has been thrown around, but there's a lot of people learning a lot of things from podcasts, from YouTube, from just buying books and reading them. Mm -hmm. And I do think in time, I hope, and I think it will happen that school will go away. Uh, They're going to fight it and they're going to fight it hard. And teacher unions are strong. And as long as people have this worship of teachers, it allows those political ads to get up there and say he's anti-kid, he's pro-kid, whatever. Because anyone who wants to make cuts to the school system is an evil guy and it's easy to criticize them. So there's that kind of pressure on politicians for sure. 
to not change because if you make cuts to school, then you don't care about kids. And the teacher union's pretty strong <laughs> generally. And if you ever look at their newsletter that comes out, it's kind of funny. Like you would be shocked that these people are teachers with the arguments they make. But, um, <laughs> but there's a lot of teachers and they're paid very well. Uh, especially for what they do, at least in Pennsylvania, which we were just looking at some of those numbers. It's shocking how high they're paid. But I thought they um, don't get paid enough. I know. And they'll tell you that because they believe that because that's the propaganda they get. They live in their own teacher world. They're with 16 year old kids all day. They only talk to teachers all day and they get their NEA newsletter. And all they hear about is that doctors make 200 grand and they're making a measly 110. Yeah. Prorated. Why don't you go ahead and prorate that for an entire 12 months instead yeah. of eight months too? Exactly. And they, so they get paid plenty. And of course I did talk about one of the higher school districts in the area, Well, but on the low end. <laughs> yeah, let's, I, I forget off the top of my head because I grew up in one of the worst school districts in Pennsylvania. Like it is absolutely atrocious. By any measure. Yeah. Um, my parents would have moved if they couldn't afford to send us to Catholic school. Uh, okay. Scrolling down to... Okay. So this is one of the worst school districts in the state. The average teacher salary, according to niche.com, for this school district is $88,000 a year. So those kids must be doing very well. How, how's their proficiency in math? I don't know what these proficiencies are because the little question mark's not clicking, but it's by percentage. And uh, I mean, maybe that's just the percent of kids that like qual like some basic, some level, expected level of math they're supposed to be able to do. That's what I'm assuming. I'm sure it's not solving differential equations. No. But it is 19% proficient in math, 35% proficient in reading. So almost one in five. And well, it's because they they don't get enough funding per student, you know, right. of course. So expenses per student, $18,556 compared to the national average of $12,239. Houses. That's K through 12. So if you believe the purpose of school, and this is one district we, but we were we looked through a whole bunch of them and it's it's kind of sad but if you believe the purpose of school is to get kids proficient in reading and math that means these teachers are failing four out of five times and they're getting paid eighty eight thousand dollars a year when if we look at the medium median individual income in the united states is about thirty nine thousand so you're making more than double that to fail eighty percent of eighty one percent of the time well but that's median and you're talking about average well, give us a break. We're, this That's enough of a, a difference, though. I don't think the average, uh, the median teacher salary is going to be uh, off by $50,000 to make it comparable to the median. Probably not. Also, take 50% of that salary and add it to their salary because they're only working eight months out of the year. Right. If you want to compare apples to apples more. But, um, so... I, <laughs> kind of remember what i was going to say and it's now kind of taking the conversation a little bit of a turn but um bird sent us a link to a ghostbuster song do you remember that a couple days ago maybe no. it was last week i don't, I don't know. know he sent it in our text chain so i watched the video and i was like i'm gonna go watch ghostbusters so i did and it's kind of funny because the epa is the bad guy now this came out in 1984 um i don't think the epa would be the bad guy if it came out today could be wrong but um uh, they had to go look up. They became private investigators or whatever, private Ghostbusters thing when their funding got cut from the university. And uh, they had to look up what Zool, this is ghost, is. And the guy went and did his research and came back a couple days later, which is funny because today you can literally just type it in Google and find out who this guy was. Um, you don't, you know, times change and school doesn't change. Uh, now, now we now with the internet, you have all kinds of information right at your fingertips, and no need to no no need to learn how to whatever we did in school. I remember learning about encyclopedias and learning how to use them in school. I never yeah. used one ever. 
outside well, yeah, of school. I saw this on a meme recently, but uh, it's the whole line. Everyone heard it in school. You never, you're not always going to have a calculator in your pocket to be able to solve this stuff. Yeah, <laughs> I remember hearing that. Not only do we have a calculator, but we have the world's information. We have every book ever written. But, uh, yeah, it's, it's such a, when you actually like think about it and, uh, try not to have all the emotional attachment to stuff, because like we said, we've all, you can probably, everyone can think of a good teacher to that they had growing up and they've got family men, maybe your mom's a teacher, your, you know, and they care. They really got, truly do. Some of them, I believe. Oh it. yeah. Um, but the system that they're in is impossible and it doesn't work and it doesn't matter how much you care. And it's, it's similar to the police and that, um, a lot of them go in for the right reasons, but the system that they're in just destroys people. And there's not, there's, you know, when, when whenever you have, uh, the government controlling something like this and has a monopoly on it, what's their incentive to get better? There is none. And then they have, you know, they have the tenure thing where you can just basically never get fired if you last long enough. I know I'm, I'm kind of exaggerating that, but. It takes a lot to get fired, yeah. period, as a teacher. So what are the incentives to, to innovate or improve or, to, or to, to make more money? I mean, if you if you are a teacher and you don't think you're getting paid enough and you want to make more money, then go solve a problem. Go solve and someone's problem. Else. Yeah. Be productive. Because clearly, just by the way that you, you don't think you're getting paid enough or the salaries are, are too stagnant, then you're really not solving big problems. You're actually causing problems. Right. <laughs> you got to, like, you, we send kids to go learn from you and you got to, like, undo all the stuff that they, uh, that you ruin them with. So... Yeah, I don't think that teachers are like some untouchable, should be worshipped profession. I actually think they should be criticized. Yeah. I think that would be a good start. And I think in, in 20 years, it's going to, going to school is going to be a reverse signal that you're an idiot because you aren't doing anything. <laughs> um, like, why the hell would you stay in school till you're 22? That is stupid. You could have been making something when you were 16. And I think the kids, the people, who do things when they're 16 are going to be far ahead of those who stay in school. Um, yeah. I mean, I think that's inevitable because, you know, right. just the way markets work that people who actually do good productive things get promoted economically. And, uh, that profit is a signal that brings and, other people to kind of copy what they're doing. Yeah. And, and it's, yeah. I think even when we were in school, and when I, at least when I was in school, um, the internet was just kind of I mean, the internet had been around, but certainly isn't like it is today. And computers were, you know, we still had the computer nerds. Um, nowadays, I think kids pretty much get it, uh, but we would have programming classes, and there was a whole group of kids there who knew how to do it without school. They were usually better than the teachers. And then there's a bunch of other kids who, who didn't get it. But the, the point is, I don't know how much, you know, in your general programming classes, kids actually learn. It's like you either do it out of class um, or you don't. And if you're into that thing, you're good at it and you know how to do it and you learn it and you do it on your own. And if you don't, a teacher's not going to make you like it or make you learn it. It just well, doesn't work that way. And it's the same with every subject. It was like music for me. The, any right, music program that existed in, in any school I went to, it had nothing to do with me becoming a musician. And it was probably very basic stuff, and you would go through, if, if you were in, a, I'm guessing, in and, a music oh, class in, in school. Grade school music classes were awful. Uh, you already knew how to play from home. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was just, you didn't learn. All you did was just sing lame songs. Like, it just was... Had like when people say, "Oh, we got to save these the music program in these schools." Why? I mean, if you're interested in it, then you, you're going to go do it. You go do it. Uh, there's another point that I already forgot what I want to say. School I guess, sucks. Yeah, my education didn't allow me to remember things as well as mm -hmm. I should. Yeah, same here. 
So I don't know. Do you have anything else? No, I think um, I think I do want to do another topic or another episode on school where we talk a little bit about the history of it and why it came about and that stuff. But we can do that on another episode. Okay. Yeah. Uh, do you have a free market success story? Uh, we didn't really no. talk. I got one. We well, talk about it. if you have one, go for it. Yeah, uh, I kind of mentioned it before we went on. My uh, this was a while ago on Twitter. I posted a picture of like me in my house, proving that I didn't have arms. And uh, in the background, you could see like a refrigerator, but it like was kind of in the middle of the kitchen. That's because my refrigerator died in the summer, and I replaced it. And uh, I didn't get rid of it right away because uh, the electric company offered uh, $75 to come pick it up uh, to do whatever they do with it. And so I took them up on it and finally, you know, worked all the logistics of it out uh, today. And so they have my refrigerator and I have, well, I don't have it yet. I assume it's going to be taken out of my uh, monthly bill or something. But I'll get seventy five dollars from them, so nice. I don't know the mechanics of it, so who? <laughs> hopefully, there's like no stupid government program that they government uses tax money to do that. But um, I don't know. That's the free market success story, or at least it's a success for me. Sounds good because I have more money now. Yeah. So, all right. With that. Uh, Check out mcflugel.com slash 115. We'll link to, uh, we mentioned mathbot.com, but uh, go check it out. It's it's pretty neat. It is pretty cool. Um, it's a way to, we had J.W. Weatherman on. Uh, he's one of the, the main guys at mathbot.com. We had him on at uh, episode 90, and he talked a little bit ma- about mathbot.com there. But uh, they're, uh, they're figuring out ways to come up with solutions to this uh, education problem we're talking about. And... Uh, Pretty cool incentive structure they're, they're trying to build into it. And we'll also link to uh, the episode that we mentioned with uh, that he was on the Friends Against Government podcast because he kind of goes more into details of why the current uh, system is bad and all the problems with sending your kids to spend time with babysitters for six or seven hours a day instead of being at home with the parents who should be raising uh, the kids. Um and also, uh, show notes page will have ways to follow us uh, or uh, bleh, subscribe to the podcast. I can never remember those words. <laughs> subscribe to the podcast. We're on iTunes, Stitcher, Podbean, all all those good ones. And uh, also check out LibertyMugs.com and check out our friends' podcast. We got uh, Mance Raider, Free Man Beyond the Wall, uh, Dino Files, Peaceful Treason podcast. They just did a. Uh, a show with uh, Friends Against Government. So check out Friends Against Government too. And with that, we will catch you next week. Peace.